name is Butlava Salama Khabani, aka Bobo, and welcome to Tzamu Sheshe. Tzamu Sheshe is a beautiful podcast that's going to be entertaining. We're going to be talking about a wide range of topics from entertainment to celebrity gossip, from politics to health and security in this country. Yo, guys, Kuningine, is that how it's said in Zulu? <laughs> and today I'm joined by my good friend, Mr. Maps. Yeah, man. Yeah. How, how are you doing? I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. everything good. Stay good. Stay good. Positive. Yeah, I'm positive. nervous, my guy. Yeah. Why? Yo. First shooting, but it don't matter. No. So, let's talk about you. Who's Mr. Maps? Hey. That's, 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 that's a good <laughs> question. Um, exactly. Mr. Maps is like my beta, I'm saying I'm who just happens to love hip hop and media and all that. Yeah? yeah. And where did it all start? I don't know. I'm, I think like all kids, like hobbies. You know, mm-hmm. Guys were playing TV games, my hobbies were music and cassettes. Mm-hmm. That's where it started. That's where it started. DJ in high school and producing music eventually and doing radio and DJ. Generally. Well, in this entertainment thing, you're a jack of all, hey? Not even. I mean, yes. You know, I come from an era where we had to do everything. Yeah. So you had to be a jack of all, all trades. Yeah. yeah. But you did do great, man. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. About exactly. your very newest production yes. out, Sarit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful yes. song, man. Thank you so much, man. Yeah, beautiful song. Shout out to Nooch, Mansa Kun, Dam, Sokola, yes. you know, Lime Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, that's the team I worked with on the song. How did it come about? The lyrics, the beats. Oh uh, man, it's interesting. Uh-huh. You know, I got the beat about before before COVID. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, that's um, in 2019. 2019. There's mm-hmm. some guys in the US I work with. Uh, there's a guy called uh, First Official. So mm-hmm. you know, he had sent me a bunch of beats, and that that Tridi beat was one of the favorites I really liked. And that's it. So at the time, I think during COVID, Nooch and I wrote the first part of it, and then we kind of sat on it. And then with everything that was happening around us and in the country and to the government and everything, it just felt right to finish the song and put it out, right? And so I called in Lekaka and we put keys on it and Kunda and so it came about from basically a reflection of where we are and what's happening in our society. Yeah. Great. And about Mr. Maps, going back, where did you grow up? Tell us more, man. Tell us more. We want to know everything. Where did you grow up? What you're all about? Grew up. I know that you have uh, the leg. Yes. The leg. Yes. yes. We'll get Ooh. to that. Yeah. Uh, let's get to that. Nice products there. Yeah. Um, I grew up Maseru, Maseru King. Mm-hmm. Um, then my teens I was in Kimberley, in South Africa, and then I was in Joburg, mm-hmm. and then back here again. So yeah. Um, I can tell Maseru King. <laughs> and about hip hop, when did it start? I mean, I think. When did you start rapping? When did you start producing? Rapping, I started in high school, but uh, I wasn't good enough, so I, I stopped rapping. Mm-hmm. And I rapped a little bit in high school, almost failed, and then I had to stop. Mm-hmm. And then I got more interested in the production, making beats, and that stuff. So it was only until I started recording other artists that the rap came back because you know you, you, you have to help the artist reference your idea when you're, when you're producing mm-hmm. music so mm-hmm. half the time I maybe write something and rap it for them to understand to understand and then you know one or two of them would be like why don't you just rap on the song and then you know I played with the idea but then it took guys like Papa Z for example pulled me to the side the one time and he's like bruh you rap nicer than all the guys you feature. Why don't you rap? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> and I was like, nah, nah, nah. But then I thought about it. And then it's fun. It's a way for me to, to vent. Yeah. And do you write? Yes. Yeah. I write a lot of stuff. I, uh-huh. I write more stuff than I rap. Like I write adverts. I write radio stuff. Of course. Yeah, I like behind the scenes stuff. Oh, so yeah. you're, you're not the mystery behind the scenes. I've always yeah. been. I've always been. Yeah, but you, you're sometimes doing... Uh, events where you you book at and, the front yeah, and, and you're at the front and sometimes you do you know like I said um, as one of the guys who's pioneering this stuff your voice is on is on adverts all that yeah, yeah sometimes yeah. you have to lead from the front you have to do it for 
the rest of your team to participate. Don't get it. Sometimes to execute a vision, you have to do it. Like nobody else gets it. So um, I'm at the front because I have to because it's business. But um, I prefer being behind the scenes. Is it? Yeah. What you say as Mr. Maps, the younger version of you would be happy that now you're Mr. Behind the Scenes. <laughs> Um, it's an interesting question because, you know, I was telling someone the other day, right, you know, they were asking me why, if I've been doing this for so long, why haven't I haven't blown up? And, and my answer was, I don't think I want to. I, I don't think I want that. I don't want what comes with that. I love the art. I love making the creative stuff, writing, writing music, producing, but I don't want to be on stage. I'm too shy for that. I, no, you're not too shy for to that. that man. No. Yeah. It's, I respect the yeah, rappers yeah. who do that because there's uh, a personality aspect of them that wants to be the best. They want to be okay. at the forefront. You have to want it. You know, you can't have assets. So I knew. So the younger okay. version of me really wanted to be on stage. Okay. Really wanted okay. Okay. Until I realized I enjoy more. All right. You know? So to answer your question, the younger version of me be disappointed, but also pleasantly surprised. Yeah, because I do a lot more. You know, I started as a music producer, but now I produce TV, I produce events, I produce radio, I produce so many different other things. I produce uh, corporate social responsibility campaigns. Mm -hmm. So the younger me would definitely be super proud, actually, super proud. I think. And given the beautiful state of music now in our country that it's coming up nicely. Who are it. some of the young cats that you probably work with? <coughs> What's young? They I'm are young. coming. I'm young. <laughs> of course you are. I'm young. You are. What's young? <laughs> you know what I mean? What's young? But you are. Young is like um, the 20 year old. She's 20 is a bit too, too young. I, I, I don't but they're know. coming up with oh, very yeah. good oh, yeah, music, sure. yeah? Um, it would be hard for me to remember their names off the top, but you know, I'm going to drop a mix like in a couple of weeks where I actually showcase the young guys I'm listening to. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of dope guys, man, but you know, my go-to guys will be, this is why I asked you when I was young, but there's guys that are younger than me mm -hmm. that you may consider old. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. So there's guys like Turk, who I love what Turk is doing. Mm -hmm. The unforgettable rap kid. Like, he's... He's super intelligent with it, and he's, he's found his pocket. Um, <coughs> obviously, Stana. I love what Stana does. Mm -hmm. I love how high he's flying the flag, and I love how he's effortless with it. Mm -hmm. you see, that's the other thing. You have to be effortless with that. And you can't act this shit. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah you yeah, can't you can't, act, you yeah. can't. you can't yeah. pretend it. You have to be active. Yeah. It's like being a gangster. You can't. Half year, you have to be active. And as Mr. Maps, how many songs have you done? Jesus. <laughs> in your whole lifetime, in your whole uh, career? Um, I think that's an unfair question to any producer. Why? How many songs have I released is a different. All question. right, how many songs have you released? Because, then? I mean, okay, I've released four singles in the last three years mm -hmm. just to, you know, put music out there. But before that, I didn't. I've done an album three mixtapes and then a bunch of other people stuff. Um, I've done a whole mixtape with El Toro as Royale. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mm -hmm. Max El Toro as Royale. Mm -hmm. um, I've done Best Kept Secret mixtapes. I've done Backstage Pads with some Joba guys. Um, yeah, so um, I've done stuff for Sake of Skill that won the Hype Award back in 2008. I, think. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I don't know how much music I've done, but I've done a lot of it. A lot of yeah, this, I mean, you know, uh, my lady's always encouraging me to put it out, like, because also I have a lot of it that hasn't, Why don't that you I haven't put, it put out? out. Because what? it's like your babies, man. You just don't put it out there. It's, yeah. It comes with understanding. It comes with, like, if I put a song out, I, I would like to hope you guys understand it and then eventually enjoy it. But if I put a lot of songs out, a lot of messages get lost. Get lost, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, um... I mean, I'm going to put a lot of it out now because I also just want to close that chapter of it and do something else. The chapter of music? No, not necessarily. The chapter of young boy hip-hop. Oh, okay. Yeah. And focus on? Grown folk music. Like? You'll see. <laughs> <laughs>
Tell us more. We want to tell us more. Well, for starters, um, I manage Priscilla Tosema. Yeah. So Priscilla Tosema. Yeah. yeah, you're the manager now. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I want to do some legacy stuff with her, which is a different mindset altogether. Is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, she's our Beyonce, and y'all didn't even know it. <laughs> y'all didn't even know it. Well, I don't know, but probably is. And um, since you started your career of music, who are some of the biggest artists in Lesotho that you've worked with? I think I've worked with everybody in Lesotho. Is it? Yeah. Why? Uh, Papa Z, uh, Nooch, um, El Tor, uh, uh, Minister Poe, um, Confab, yeah, shout out to Confab, he, he was a big inspiration mm -hmm. to me, yeah. mm -hmm. I looked up to him, um, Lomile, uh, Cleopatra, uh, Pizora Mahunda, Mansa uh, um, yeah, there's a lot of people. Um, Hosa Tahani, Lekaka, um, Ladeho Nye, OG Scales, um, yeah, the list goes on. It goes on and on and on. Anybody who's really, really dope. Yeah, 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 yeah. And with all those people that you've mentioned, lyrically, who do you believe is the best? Nooch. Nooch. Yeah. They're all different, but Nooch is the most concise and intelligent about it. Is it? Yeah. He shows off without showing off. Let's play a little further, like, when he says what? At least. Okay, when you, yeah. when you listen to Sarit, I want to get an example of Sarit. Yeah. There's a line there where he says, I'm not saying I'm the best. He has a list of weirds, and then he keeps quiet. Mm -hmm. And then he's like, Tell the truth to your kids. So when you hear what he just did there, like, it's, it's special. He, he does special things like that all the time. All the time. Yeah, that's wow. what he does. So <laughs> you work with the best because you want the best? Um, it makes me really good if yeah. I work with the best because it forces me to... To, to level yeah. up as well. Yeah. yeah. And apart from music, what else does Mr. Max do? I live. <laughs> no, um, we all live. We all live. Yeah. I don't know. Um, emotive PR. Um, emotive PR. Yeah. yeah. Tell I'm us about that. I'm a creative director of emotive PR. Um, I, I do a lot of corporate communication and multimedia. So, mm -hmm. and then, um, I eat, man. I love food, so I have a whole brand called The Lick that you mentioned earlier. Nice. Um, yeah. We focus on premium organic food. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you grow the food yourself? And you prepare it yourself. Yeah. Well, it's different aspects of it. Like we have pickled stuff that I grow as like pickle, and then we also do like premium uh, catering or gourmet catering. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is there anything that in in, in the the product the leg mm -hmm. that is not made in the suit, or is it just mm -hmm. everything made in the suit? Probably the bottles. Oh, just the bottle. Yeah. yeah, the console glass. Shout out to any Lesotho who can put up a bottle of plant. Ah, we, the first guy we should support. produce more as Lesotho, guys. We need to produce more as Lesotho. We need to have our own bottle companies, our own packaging companies, the whole shebang, and stop importing things to our country. Um, as for the lake, going back to the lake again, <coughs> uh, what products do you have? Um, it is the sauce. We have we have a uh, uh, pickled jalapeno, which is our, our base yeah. uh, product, uh -huh. and then in season we have picante peppers, mm -hmm. or what you might know as pepper juice, mm -hmm. and then we also have a Jap stew that which is like a barbecue sauce that we do on all. And where can people get the link? No, oh, um, that's difficult. I'm actually struggling to produce enough of it to. <laughs> to do that. So, um, mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe the next episode, uh, but what people can actually do is follow us on Instagram at the Lick Eats. Uh, hopefully, you'll write it down here somewhere. But mm -hmm. yeah, at the Lick Eats on Instagram. Follow us there and then you can DM us for stuff. But as far as going to, you know, we're, we're still trying to develop a situation where we can go retail and serve people, you know, 
I remember you struggled to get your bottle for a minute. And no, you, you almost beat. For a month and plus. No, but you took but a bottle that wasn't even yours. <laughs> so that was the problem. <laughs> Just started plus drinking, I... um, eating the stuff. <laughs> But yeah, um, it's another situation that, uh, you know, came out of, I believe in always going to keep busy. I, I, I don't like being idle, so uh-huh. with the lake, you know, I started that about 2017, 18, but then when the pandemic hit, I, it hit I almost anyway. survived on it. Like, I, I, I really focused on producing it, and uh-huh. people picked it up a lot, and it then became the whole thing. And given the foodie that you are, which food would you advise anybody to get any product of the lake? With the lake? Yeah. Man, um, if you have a steak with, with, with some of our, our, our pickled jalapeno, like you make a chimichurri with our pickled jalapeno, mm-hmm. with a little balsamic vinegar, mm-hmm. I'll take you to heaven. Uh, trout. Um, our, our, our pickled jalapeno goes great with trout. Of course it does. Jeff Stilipo goes with everything. Mm-hmm. Mashed potatoes. Mm-hmm. 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 Speaking of your opinions, mm-hmm. you've been in America. Yes. How was that? How did that come about for you as a teenager? Like my son, we came here. We went to Kenya, Salem, America, Panama. That we like White House, and got photos in there. How was that for you? How was the experience? How did it come about? Um, I was fortunate enough that. Uh, I got an interview with someone from the U.S. Embassy on a radio show I was doing at the time. And mm-hmm. I guess I made a good impression because I got nominated to a program called the International Visitor Leadership Program. Uh-huh. And yeah, man, um, they took me out there for like five weeks. Best time of my life. Um, professional engagement at the highest How's level. How's America? Tell us about America. For us, we've never been that, to America. Man. I don't know how to answer that. How are that. the people? How's the food? <laughs> I mean, everything is big. Everything is, it, is big. Is it as we see it in movies? Is, is there, there no shags? <laughs> <laughs> we want to know. Um, it's it's big, man. It's you know I got the opportunity to go to like five different states: mm-hmm. you know, uh, mm-hmm. Washington D.C., uh, Tampa, Florida, mm-hmm. uh, Seattle, Minneapolis, and New York. Uh-huh. And they're all different. How's New York? I hear it never Jesus sleeps. Yeah. It's a city that never it's, sleeps. It's everything you think it is. <laughs> yeah? I wish I was the there local, longer. I really wish different. I was there longer. It's just the culture and there's just so much to do. Mm-hmm. So much to do. So much to learn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, given that you're a hip-hop head, I'd mm-hmm. like to think, how's hip-hop in America? So that's the interesting part, right? Yeah. I went out there as a journalist. Mm-hmm. And as a creative director, so, but I say to you, there's so much happening. Yeah. I didn't even focus on music the entire time I was there. I, I didn't, I mean, I regret not going to record stores and buying albums I want and buying all mm-hmm. I regret stuff like that, but mm-hmm. there was so much other stuff happening. Mm. But at the same time, I was listening to Nipsey House's album um, that had just come out, and, uh-huh. and then he died after he Shut died. Up. So yes. I feel like. That's the only connection I have with music in America at that time. Like, at that time. I also realized that we get like a fraction of the music out there. We get what's being put out on radio and video and internet. Mm-hmm. There's a the subcultures of music there in that America, we, we, we don't lot, even yeah. yeah. I mean exactly. in DC I was with some Ethiopian guys and they were playing stuff for us. Like, is this from here? Yeah. Like what is this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, Mr. Maps is Mostly hip hop, right? Nah, hip hop is one aspect of one aspect of you. I was gonna ask, given that it's this Matiano era, are you gonna pull up anything? Do 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 do. Soon. There's a whole, there's a whole other guy called Flames Malaga. Oh yes, 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 from YouTube. That's Mr. Maps and Matiano. Yeah. Or Flames Malaga. Yeah? yeah, Mr. Flames. You, follow, follow, you guys. Should do an interview yeah. with Flames Malaga. Uh-huh. We're going to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, guys, um, what's, what's your take on the Mapiano genre right I now? I love it. I yeah. love how Mapiano is like the newer version of Quieto in that it comes from the ground. It comes from 
Kuka comes from the people, so it's a ghetto. To access it. There's so many guys doing who are changing their lives. They're becoming, uh, not only celebrities, but they're making money uh, out of this. They can put food it's on the table. Yeah. They can put food on the table. It's original. It's, yeah. it's, 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 it's theirs. Mm -hmm. So, I love it. I love it. <clears throat> um, but it's also dangerous. One, it's so easy. But that's why there's subgenres and levels of to it, right? Like, mm -hmm. I love this private school my piano, which is a whole vibe. Yeah, private school my piano, I, I think I listened to it once. Place. Yeah, I, I listened to I'm not particularly a, a, a my piano person. Mm -hmm. I think I think they, there's too much competition in my piano. There's a new song every week, every 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 new day. They play that's, the ex, that's the exercise okay. I'm talking about. The mm -hmm. fact that mm -hmm. these kids can sit in their bedrooms and drop music means mm -hmm. there's so much of it. But it also means so much of it is just bubble gum. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there's guys who do it, like dope, dope, dope tracks mm -hmm. and give. You know, ultimately, music is supposed to give people moments. Mm -hmm. and my piano does that. Mm -hmm. My piano does that in the best way. Hence the crazy dances. Well, with with with. The, the very same my piano now and how we grew up in the 90s and the music that we listened to and comparing the two, which which one do you think is the best? I mean obviously I'm a 90s kid so I'll go with everything from the 90s but you also have to understand it for what it is right now. Mm -hmm. like. We had to buy CDs, right? Yeah. So the music can only We had to buy so cassettes, my guy. We had to right buy cassettes. Right now, my piano exists on the internet. So yeah. the reach is way bigger. Yeah. It's so it's doing that. more, right? Of course, of course. So we had to... I don't know, man. Quiet was like the sound of end of a party. There was sound of freedom. It was... My piano is the sound of rebirth, like social middle class mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know so because music represents society it represents the mood right and to say what was better you know we'll be biased because we grew up there mm -hmm. but these kids now man they're doing some amazing stuff amazing stuff yeah 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 i'll try to agree to a certain extent yeah maybe <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to a certain extent, maybe when it comes to uh, other forms of entertainment, as for my piano. But anyway, let's not take it there. We are here to talk to Mr. Maps about Mr. Maps. Yeah. Tell us more, man. Anything? You a lot. No, you didn't. You didn't tell us a lot. You tell us more. Like. Tell us more. What's your favorite food? What's your favorite Lesotho? destination where you'd like to visit you know let's talk about our country then what you I love, love about what what you love about basoto i love the fact that we're homogenous i love the fact that uh how you get things i farm so you know i love fun i love our language i love where we are in the world right mm -hmm. i just wish we could do more I love our country. Um, I've traveled everywhere in our country. I've done like it's a play. I've mm -hmm, done. Mm -hmm. I celebrate our culture. I love being in Lesotho. And being a farmer in Lesotho, what's your take now with the, 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 the weather situation? How has it affected your farming? Okay, the last two years kind of been bad. There's been too much rain, so a lot of stuff got rained out. Like last year, I had no pecan to pepper mm -hmm. crop. It got rained out. Mm -hmm. but, I think we're coming back. I think we're going to have a better summer this year. Alright guys. Kim Tatet Lightima Pepa, Mr. Maps. He's told us everything that he needs to tell us about himself. Which everything, was all good. Everything else, man. At the Maps or at Emotive PR on Instagram. Or at the Lake Eats. Um, Love being black. Love yeah. being here. Yeah. Love being also too. It's beautiful Thankful being also be too. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. That's that's also amazing. 
So thank you guys. Thank you, Mr. Maps, so thank much for coming through. Uh, making me your guinea pig. <laughs> <laughs> on my Sunday. <laughs> Very first podcast. Galvez again did not get Tamusha. Main host, Bobo. <laughs> so catch it every Monday uh, on YouTube. And yeah, I hope you follow us, guys, and subscribe, 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 subscribe. Buy for a photo for a photo. Uh, let's take Lusutu to the world. Uh, but on the platform is here, internet is here, the world is here at our pedestal. Let's use that opportunity and do good where, where we can do good as Basoto. Because I as Basoto people. So I'm counting on you to be a better human being. <laughs> Thank you guys. See you again next time on Zamosheshe. <laughs>